The dinosaurs coexisted with a number of reptiles closely related to crocodilians. Called crocodilomorphs, many were terrestrial animals quite different from anything alive today. These land crocs lasted for the entire Mesozoic era and beyond, but the ancestors of today's crocodilians evolved to become semi-aquatic predators rather early during the reign of the dinosaurs. Although only a fraction of these aquatic crocodilomorphs were true crocodilians, they are united with them in the larger, more inclusive clade Neosuchia. It is easy to assume there was a simple dichotomy between the more familiar amphibious species and the more basal land crocs, but some Neosuchians diverged greatly from their crocodile-like ancestors. Among these is the recently described Voranosuchus sacunnacanensis a meter-long Neosuchian which appears to have returned to a primarily terrestrial existence. Voranosuchus's genus name is a reference to its presumed ecological similarities to monitor lizards. Voranus is the genus monitor lizards belong to, while Suchus means crocodile, and is a common component in the names of prehistoric crocodilomorphs. The monitor croc species name, Sakunnakanensis, refers to the region it was found in, the Sakunnakan province in Thailand. Its fossils originate from the Sao Kwa Formation, which was formed roughly 133 million years ago during the early Cretaceous period. Three Varanosuka specimens have been found, which together provide a relatively complete picture of what it looked like. There is a possible fourth specimen, an incomplete lower jaw, which was formerly assigned to the now defunct species Goniophilus fuyangensis. This specimen is larger than the definitive ones, but it could just as easily belong to a more traditionally amphibious Neosuchian as to Varanosuchus. If more of the skull had been preserved, there would be little doubt regarding its identity. While most Neosuchians have flattened heads to reduce the resistance created as they move through the water, Varanosuchus' skull is much taller and deeper. Additionally, the nostrils of crocodilians and their semi-aquatic kin are positioned at the top of their snouts, which allows them to easily breathe while in the water. The monitor croc's nares are instead forward-facing. Varanosuchus's orbits were also oriented to the side of the skull. Those of crocodilians and most other Neosuchians are instead placed toward the top, which allows them to see potential prey while keeping most of their body hidden under the water. All of these traits were typical of the first crocodilomorphs, but as a Neosuchian, Varanosuchus had to reacquire them from semi-aquatic, crocodile-like ancestors. Voranosuchus had two types of teeth. Those at the front are circular and pointed. They have a simple cutting edge, but lack the serrations or laterally compressed shape found in the teeth of most other carnivorous land crocs, which, ironically, had a greater resemblance to the teeth of monitor lizards. A few of the monitor crocs' teeth are greatly enlarged, and to accommodate them, Voranosuchus evolved two notches in its upper jaws one between the maxilla and the premaxilla, and another between the fifth and sixth maxillary teeth. The teeth in the back of the skull are smaller and laterally compressed. Much like lance heads, they have wider bases which taper to thinner but still broad crowns for which they have been named lanceolate teeth. While the sharp teeth at the front of the jaws are those of a meat eater, the purpose of the lanceolate teeth is unknown. Varanosuchus's skull had an antorbital fenestra, an opening between the nares and orbits present in both the first crocodilomorphs and dinosaurs. However, it lacked another opening originally found in these reptiles, the mandibular fenestra, in the lower jaw. In contrast, crocodilians have lost their antorbital fenestra, but have retained their mandibular fenestra. A more advanced trait can be found in Varanosuchus's respiratory system. Like modern crocodilians, the back of its nasal passage was bound to the pterygoid bone, forming a secondary palate. In crocodilians, this has been linked to their ability to open their mouths underwater without letting water enter their lungs. However, this similarity with crocodilians appears to be a result of convergent evolution, as it is absent in other closely related Neosuchians. It also independently evolved in at least one other group of Neosuchians, the short-snouted, and in at least some cases herbivorous, Hyliochampsids. Since it wasn't inherited from a common ancestor, the presence of pterygoid-bound nasal passages in Varanosuchus may appear to be evidence that it had returned to a more crocodile-like ecology. However, it has recently been discovered that more primitive Neosuchians, such as Amphicotylus, already had a soft tissue equivalent of a secondary palate their replacement by the pterygoid might have instead served to merely reinforce the skull. 
a bony secondary palate evolved convergently in the bone-crushing tyrannosaurid dinosaurs for similar reasons. A common myth regarding evolution is that it has some sort of end goal, as opposed to organisms merely adapting to their current conditions. The monitor croc's limbs are a great example of this. While reptiles ancestrally walked in a sprawling stance, the first crocodilomorphs were land crocs with fully upright gaits, which they had inherited from their last common ancestor with the dinosaurs. While this stance is often seen as more advanced, the legs of the Neosuchians became shorter and reverted to a more lizard-like posture when they took to the water. They did not entirely leave their terrestrial capabilities behind, as crocodilians can still assume a semi-erect stance. This laid the groundwork, which enabled Varanosuchus to reverse its ancestors' evolutionary reversal. Its limbs are much longer and straighter than those of most Neosuchians, broadly matching those of land crocs. However, its humerus had an intermediate shape between those of sprawling and upright crocodilomorphs. While the paleontologists who described Varanosuchus considered its limbs to be largely erect, they also considered the intermediate shape of its humerus to be evidence that it may not have entirely left the water behind. Alternatively, the monitor croc may have simply been unable to undo all the changes brought about by its amphibious heritage. Like most other crocodilomorphs, Varanosuchus was protected by bony osteoderms, which have been found covering its neck, back, tail, and belly. As in most other Neosuchians, they were heavily vascularized. Vascularized osteoderms can absorb heat much faster than skin, and are typically seen as an aquatic adaptation among ectotherms like Neosuchians. Body heat is lost in the water much faster than on the surface, but with their vascularized osteoderms, crocodilians can rapidly warm up while remaining in the water. These crocodile-like osteoderms are further evidence that the monitor croc maintained some ties to the water. On the other hand, they may have continued to prove useful for a fully terrestrial animal, as they would have reduced the time it needed to bask in the sun. In any event, Varanosuchus's deep skull and long upright limbs indicate it clearly spent much of its time on land, and even if it didn't entirely abandon the water, Varanosuchus was not adapted to hunt in the same manner as crocodilians. As its name implies, a better ecological analog for the monitor croc is a species of monitor lizard, the semi-aquatic Asian water monitor. Compared to crocodilians, this giant lizard is adept both on land and in the water, and can even be found in Thailand. The other members of Varanosuchus's branch of Neosuchia, Atoposauridae, are also considered to have been primarily terrestrial animals. These universally small crocodilomorphs were once widespread across the Northern Hemisphere, and lasted from at least the late Jurassic, perhaps earlier, to the very end of the Mesozoic era. Fossils from Eocene Yemen have been assigned to the clade, suggesting that the monitor croc's lineage may have extended into the Cenozoic, outlasting even the non-avian dinosaurs. Despite their long evolutionary history, Atoposaurid fossils are rare. This has been used as further evidence that these Neosuchians were land crocs. Terrestrial environments are less conductive towards fossilization than aquatic ones, so the fossil record of small terrestrial animals tends to be sparser. The discovery of Varanosuchus has helped to address a major problem regarding the status of Otoposauridae. In 2016, a paper analyzing Atoposaurid evolution came to the conclusion that most of the crocodilomorphs assigned to the clade were not actually closely related to each other. Only two Atoposaurids, Alligatoria myuri and Theriosuchus bacillus, had been included in most of the phylogenetic analyses that had assigned most Atoposaurids to the clade. What the authors found is that when they were all included, the various so-called Atoposaurids were placed within different parts of Neosuchia. Only five species, all from the late Jurassic islands of Europe, were considered to be true Atoposaurids by the paper's authors. Despite the major implications regarding Neosuchian evolution, there was little follow-up on this paper's findings, even in papers describing new Atoposaurids. Fortunately, the phylogenetic analysis in the description of Varanosuchus finally included a large sample of traditional Atoposaurids. A few problematic species, such as Monsecosuchus, were not included in the analysis but the team found that the rest of the taxa assigned to Atoposauridae over the years do appear to form a true monophyletic clade as originally envisioned. Beyond that, they were largely unable to glean much regarding Atoposaurid interrelationships. 
The analysis did find that the closest relative of Varanosuchus was Aprosuchus, which lived at the very end of the Cretaceous period. It inhabited Hateg Island, now part of Romania, which is famous for its dwarf dinosaurs and giant pterosaurs. The vast geographical and temporal space between it and the monitor croc, which lived nearly 60 million years earlier in Asia, indicates the existence of a major ghost lineage, once again highlighting a Toposauridae's poor fossil record. The phylogenetic analysis also found a Toposauridae to be the sister clade of Paralgatoridae. While the 2016 paper considered Ataposaurids to be basal Neosuchians, many of the putative Ataposaurids were placed near or within this more derived clade. Some paralligatoroids, such as Paralligator itself, lived much like crocodilians do, while others are thought to have been land crocs like the Ataposaurids. Besides Varanosuchus, another Ataposaurid, Theriosuchus grandinaris, has been found in the Sao Qua Formation. Its waterways were also inhabited by more traditional amphibious Neosuchians such as Siamosuchus and Sunosuchus. 133 million years ago, this part of prehistoric Thailand was a semi-arid floodplain. The dinosaurs found in the Sao Kua formation are fairly obscure, but belonged to the same groups of dinosaurs abundant elsewhere in the early Cretaceous. As in the rest of the world, the dominant herbivorous dinosaurs were the long-necked sauropods, such as Fuwiangosaurus. Large Ornithischian dinosaurs were either rare or absent in the Sao Qua formation, although Iguanodontians are common in the slightly younger Cockcruat formation. Carnivores included an as of yet unnamed species of Carcharodontosaurid, the top predators of the time, and the Megaraptorans Fuyang Venator and the smaller Vayuraptor, theropods notable for their powerful forelimbs. Although they were smaller than the Carcharodontosaurid, these Megaraptorans were much higher in the food chain than the monitor croc. Varanosuchus also lived in the shadows of a spinosaurid named Siamosaurus. Spinosaurids were specialized fish eaters, but Siamosaurus's teeth have been found alongside the skeleton of a sauropod, although it is unclear whether this was the result of hunting or scavenging. A much less fearsome contemporary of the monitor croc was Kinnerimimus, who is currently the oldest known ornithomimosaur. However, the dinosaurs found at the Sao Qua formation are primarily large carnivorous theropods, something that is not representative of a stable ecosystem. They appear to have congregated around the river due to the abundant supply of fish, which meant their bones were more likely to be preserved than those of the herbivores. It is likely that, much like the dinosaurs, the Varanosuchus individuals found at the Saoqua Formation regularly consumed the locally available fish. As for whether Varanosuchus as a whole was tied to the wetlands, that is still largely a mystery. It was clearly a land croc, but some traits, such as its vascularized osteoderms, suggest it retained some aquatic tendencies, as in the Asian water monitor of today. Complicating matters, the functional anatomy of the monitor croc's teeth and the teeth of other ataposaurids have yet to be analyzed, so their diets are still poorly understood. Still, Varanosuchus's ecology was substantially different from those of modern crocodilians, and its discovery has helped science to better understand an entire branch of crocodilomorphs. Thank you for watching, and a thank you to Matt Wazak for narrating this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button, and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to support this channel more directly, you can join my Patreon, where you'll have access to polls to select the topics of future videos. Finally, be sure to have a great day.